Hi, my name is James Cook. I'm an associate professor of sociology at the University of Maine at Augusta, and the purpose of this video is to show you really how easy it is to install and run uh, a combination of two software packages. They're called R and RStudio. R is, you know, there's a lot of history behind that one letter, but you can think of R as standing for research. It is a program that allows you to engage in many forms of research. And RStudio is a program that um, uh, allows you, regardless of what computer you're on, to run the program in a similar way. Uh, and once you've installed both, you just run RStudio. So we're going to do both using a Windows computer today um, that doesn't have either installed at all. And uh, you can use any search engine, and you can type in r-project, and that will take you to a link to the web page, r-project.org, uh, which is for this free program. Uh, it's created by statisticians and research methodologists. Um, it has been validated as uh, safe to run on any of three different kinds of computers, a Windows computer, a Mac computer, or a Unix computer even. Uh, if you'd like to do that, I'll show you how to you download with uh, Mac uh, Windows today. There's a separate video that I've created, um, which you can find by searching my YouTube uh, channel showing how to download R on a Mac. So to do so, you simply head to rproject-project.org, and you could either uh, click under download CRAN. <laughs> or you can click on the link that says to download R. We'll just click there, to download R. And now it's going to present you something that looks confusing, but it's a set of mirrors, okay? CRAN is short for the Comprehensive R Archive Network. This is not created by any mega corporation. It's a free piece of software created by academics. And so the burden of um, downloading and having a, a web space to download from to run this program is distributed across a number of universities. What I'd encourage you to do is to find one in the country where you live. We're going to work with USA and um, I'm going to um, just pick one. I'm going to pick Washington University, St. Louis, Missouri, and that is a place where anyone can download uh, R. And then I'm going to click on the link for that place. And no matter what the link you click is, it's going to take you to this page. And there are going to be three options for downloading R. Uh, I'm going to pick download R for Windows because I'm showing you this on a Windows computer. If you had a Mac, you'd click download R for Mac and similarly for Linux. And once you do that, um, you're going to want to, you're going to be shown a, a few links and this base is what you want to install R for the first time. It says so, okay? So click on that base. And then you'll be taken to this page where you can finally download the most recent version of R, which is R 4.2.2. It means it's the fourth largest update with the second subset of that and the, the second minor, minor update underneath that. And so we're going to click on that. And what it's going to do then is download. Now, it's 76 megabytes, so it's going to take a minute, just like it's taken here. But as you can see, it's downloading fairly quickly. We're a third of the way through. And then when we're done, we're going to click on this exe file. It's a program that's an installer. Uh, what could be simpler? We're already more than halfway there, as I've uttered these few sentences. And in about 10 seconds, we'll be done. So you can see that this is really uh, straightforward. Okay, here we are. So now I'm gonna click on that. And just like with any other program on a Windows machine, it's going to then, uh, once I uh, click on it, well, it may dis it disappeared. So let's go, or, or it's waiting for it. Here we are. Uh, I'm getting a Norton status update here. Okay, uh, but it was just saying, hey, it checks out. And then I'm going to get a pop-up window that says, 
hey, did you want to be uh, permitted to install this? And you select yes. And then you simply click OK. And then it's going to install. And you sh simply should select uh, yes. Uh, no, you don't want to customize the startup options. Um, just keep going and click, keep clicking next. And it's going to, uh, I'm going to create a quick launch, quick launch shortcut. And we're going to want to create a desktop shortcut. And then it's going to extract files from the internet. And while it's doing so, um, we'll talk about then what we're going to do to download our studio. Um, that's going to be a separate uh, a program. It's created by the POSIT, P-O-S-I-T Corporation, and it is uh, an environment that creates a more refined way to run R. It is also free, although you're going to want to be careful about um, finding the free version and avoiding paying for it by clicking on the more prominent buttons on that website. But here we are, we've finished um, that. So now we should be able to run R. And you can do that by hitting the Windows key and then simply typing R. And if it doesn't appear because it wants it to, to show running, then we can um, just click on that Windows button again and scroll down. And here we see R. Okay. And we could run R 4.2.2 uh, by clicking there, but we're going to want to install R Studio on top of it. So the next step is to head to a search engine, I'm going to use Google just because it's available, and type in R Studio. And there it is at posit.co. And we're going to click on the main link for R Studio. Uh, you notice it's the Posit Corporation, okay? So our studio is something that we're gonna download by clicking on the download our studio button. And then there's, it's gonna show a number of different versions. Okay, and under download our studio, as we scroll down, we want the version of our studio desktop that is free. Um, because there's no reason we should pay for it. And after you click download, um, okay, you're going to uh, install R. We already did that. That's step one. Step two is to install R Studio. So we're going to click the button that says download R Studio Desktop for Windows. Now, this is a little larger. It's 193 megabytes, so it'll take about another minute to download, uh, but it's still really not that much time, as you can see. What's really neat about R is that it has a series of packages that we'll talk about in later videos that you can use to complete just about any task. And those packages are also free and vetted by uh, statisticians and research methodologists. So they do a really good job. Often the state of the art is not in statistical programs that um, actually cost thousands of dollars um, because those are delayed, but the state of the art is in R itself. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, that uh, when it, statisticians and methodologists develop a new method, uh, the first place that they'll publish it before they publish it anywhere else is on uh, our studio. So um, now I'm going to uh, run that program that uh, will install our studio. And I'm going to click Next, and I'm going to note where the destination folder, C slash program files slash RStudio, and I'm going to install it here in the Start menu. And 
it's now downloading the full program. As you can see, it really doesn't take that long to ins uh, install this larger package as well. It's uh, already extracting the program. And all these smaller files which are used to support it. And then once we're done here, we're going to be ready to run our studio. And then I'm going to show you three ways to execute commands in what are called the console and the script windows. This is a good time to get a mug of tea, a little bit of coffee, um, but don't wait for too long because, as you can see, the uh, uh, installation is progressing apace. What we're going to do as soon as our studio is ready to run is to uh, simply say, hello. There are many more complicated things that you can do with our studio, but saying hello is always a good start. It's a simple way to uh, know for sure that the basics of the program are working. So now our studio has been installed. So on a Windows computer, I can hit the Windows key and type in our studio, and you'll see now it's here as an app. I can launch it. And it will run in just a moment. Okay, here we are. R is launching. We have the icon for R. And here's our program. I'm going to allow you to see all of R here in our recording. Good. Now, once R is loaded, there are a number of windows that you could see, but there's a very important uh, window that will first appear. Um, this is the console window, and it's the it's it's like working with um, and one of those old mainframe computers, right, where you type in a command, add a prompt, and that's what that little uh, greater than sign is. And I could simply tell it to say hello by typing in quotes, hello. And then it gives me a response. It says, hello back. Now, the second thing I could do is that I could uh, assign the idea of hello to uh, another term, right? And I could create a shortcut for saying hello. Um, so I could say, uh, the way to do that is to name that shortcut, and we'll call that shortcut high. And then we're going to draw an arrow to high to say whatever is on the other side of the arrow is what high is going to mean. And here I'll type in again the quotes and hello. So now high is it's a variable which could have different values, but I've given it a variable and the variable's uh, uh, value is hello. So now when I say, oh, show me what hi is, it will respond with hello. And that little one in brackets means that's the first line, the first command. Well, we could do just one more thing, uh, which is that we could, under file, we could set up a new file and it's called an R script. And you'll notice now that there's a new window that is opened up. This is the script file. And the thing about a script that the console can't do is that it can be saved. So while the console is down there, as long as you're running R, you've lost everything once R has uh, closed, or rather this is R Studio. 
which will appear the same way on a Macintosh or a Unix computer, by the way. So I could um, now um, type in a program in which I assign hi to mean hello earth. Moment. Got to plug in my computer. And that's the first line. And then on the second line, I could tell it to give me the value of high. And I simply do that by issuing the command high. I've created a new command, right? I could also simply type hello and see what happens. Okay. And once I've done that, I can save this script somewhere, right? using the file save command, which is important because that means you can save your work and then load it up again later. But I can also run it. And I would do that by selecting code. And then there's a, a fair lot down here under code. But this important part is called run region and then run all, which means to run all the lines. Okay. And now when I run that, if you look down at this uh, console, it's gonna give me the output in the console window. And it's gonna look a lot like it did before. First, there's hi equaling hello. And then I issue the command hi and it tells me hello. And then I also just put hello in quotes and it says, oh, hello. This is all that I'd like you to do for a start. It verifies that you have R and R Studio installed on your computer and that you're able to run your first script. We'll get more complicated later, but this is a very good place.